We have been editing and uploading segments of some of our videos from previous trips, including those made years ago that we think may be of interest to others. This video covers one of the treks we made into a rainforest during our trip to the Brazilian Amazon and Rio Negro rivers in 2010. It's now 10.20 in the morning on August 2nd and we came back to the boat, uh, had breakfast and while the boat was moving to a different position and now we're going out yeah, this morning and we'll be trekking through uh, a forest and uh, also having a nice canoe ride, we call this a canoe, on the Rio Negro. Are we going to get off here? Okay. I'm going to walk here. Okay. It may be giant otter I can hoard. where they were grabbing fish there and coming up here to eat the fish. And the sea is very slippery and very clean. That's the way they come. From there up here. And they have fun right here on this area here. Mammal. Giant otter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fish. Mm -hmm. To eat fish. Yeah. How, how large? How oh, big? Two meters. Two meters? Two meters. What weight? About 80 kilos. Wow, okay. So where do they live? Their house is in the water? They or? dam on the bank. Or? <laughs> yeah. Dead trees. They have holes on the ground where they dam mm -hmm. and they burrow. they burrow. So where are the fish bones? No, no fish no bones. bones. No. When they eat the fish, they eat the bones too? No, they eat the fish and the bones, no, they don't eat the bones. And I don't see any scale here or any bones actually here. Okay. Normally you find the head of the fish or the bone because mm -hmm. they don't eat the head. No, I don't see any. Just the site where they were. Die in tiefen Erde in the Aqua. Yeah. Da machen sie so Castello. Yeah. We're gonna try to be more quiet, which is almost impossible, because of the so many different stuffs that we may see. But we try to see some mammals also, or some other things that is in the way. And just being quiet, listen, smelling and then watching, stopping. It's much better than walking and talking. Okay? So we go now. Remember this pod? The relationship to the Brazil nut. Yes, related to the Brazil nut, the paranos. Relation. This is the tree there. Uh -huh. 
Ach, das sind die. Ja, ja. Please. See the base of the tree, buttress? That's the Brazil nut family. Bertomelia excelsa. Leticidaceae. Da kann man Plantas reinmachen. Ja, Orchidien. The fruits come right here. Orchidien. Yeah, you can plant orchidien here. Yeah, yeah. It's another one here. So here we have good example of the fragility of the rainforest. Very top soil, shallow roots, big height and big canopy, wind. So it blow down with the whole roots right here. Less than half meter deep are the roots. And this is one of the way of the recycling of the rainforest. Right left here we see this branch felt here. And this is also another good example of forest gap. So a branch fall, it broke other branch and open a hole with the temperature increase. Sunlight goes on the leaves, photosynthesis, rain, wind, light. Then the branch that fell and the tree are now being sucked by the roots. Look. This is the roots of the olive trees. They looking for dead material on the ground to food, comida. See? So broke, all done. Like that. Das sind wie bei Menschen die, die Nerven. Ja. Uns die Nerven. Ja. So it's all decay. Das ist die Erde für Orchidien. Ja. Für Orchidien. That's the life and death on the rainforest. So nothing is really dead. Somebody fall, somebody already takes part of it. And that's the screaming piha, the noise. It's a bird calling to attract the female. Some bird they dance, some bird they call. Then the female choose the best call, the highest call, and to mate, to have a good health descendants for the species. More, more health the bird is, more attractive. Do you know what that is, that kinkina? This one here? Yeah. It's in the Melistone family, mm -hmm. Melistomatase. This is the same as the one that has the symbiotic relation with the ants that we, we saw, mm -hmm. okay. but this one doesn't have symbiotic relation with the ants. You know because of this venation here. Mm -hmm. And we may find some others in the same family and we're going to show you.
the last trip, the last trip on this walk, we saw a bush master right here. And I think this is its nest. It has a hole. I'm gonna try to light with the flashlight to see if I find something here. You have a flashlight here? I forgot mine. Eu acho que é o ninho dela aqui, Paulinho. Porque tem esse monte aqui, ó. E tem um buraco para lá para dentro. Pode ser. É. Yeah, there's a hole. She was right in the entrance and must be a nest of the bushmaster there. Drink your water. Let's drink some water before we continue. Clockwise, yeah? yeah. It's not very common. I've heard that about 10% of the vines uh -huh. goes like that. And they say that these ones comes from top down. I see. I don't know if it's true. It's one taxonomy group is classified because it goes clockwise. Mm -hmm. The other group is classified counterclockwise. And the species are separated because of the way they climb. Mm -hmm. And there's a hole there. Bushmaster lives in hole together with Agutipaca. Mm -hmm. It say that Agutipaca hunts at night. And that's when the bushmaster is in the in the hole. And daylight, a good paka is in the hole and bushmaster is out. So, but I think bushmaster is a nocturnal mm -hmm. snake, mm -hmm. just like the aguti. This is a tree that fell over. It's got very, very shallow roots, as you can see. I think the deepest would be a millimeter. I'm sorry, <laughs> a meter. Canopies and the different heights of trees. Yeah. The different levels or layers yeah. of forest. Yeah. So animals, they hide pretty well. Mm -hmm. And they're not that big things. They're yeah. small birds. They scream loud, but you almost don't see them. Yeah. You hear more than you see, actually. Yeah, yeah. true. Ah, smell. This is called a brio. Like a cheese. Brio is a sap that runs from the tree. Mm -hmm. Natural. When the beetle stuck its proboscis inside and drill to lay the egg. And 
The sap protects the eggs and the larvae, but they don't eat the sap. And the sap is used against headache and sinusitis. Mm -hmm. I believe it. You can smell it. Yeah, and also it's insect like repellent. Insect repellent to expel the dengue mosquito. Nowadays they produce candles mm -hmm. with this sap uh, for a day candle because yeah, yeah. Mos mm -hmm. dengue mosquito is a day mosquito. And then they, you light it for the whole day so and you then can burn it. You can burn it. Can I smell it? The other thing is to smells a little bit camphor like. Mm -hmm. To start a fire on the forest, especially in the rainy season, this is one of the best things. Mm -hmm. it, it burns very easy yeah, yeah. and it is, it's like a resin actually. And when it melts, it glue. Mm -hmm. So good also for stuck leaking canoes and other materials to seal. To make it waterproof. Yeah, yeah waterproof. I'm going to burn is it. it like copal almost? Like what? Copal resin. It's copal. Copal is like that, but it's more red in color. Uh huh. More red. I don't know copal. Is it from here? No. Well, South America, but I don't know you where. Do have a, another name? I don't think so. We, we have copaiba oleifera. Oh yeah, copaiba is something else. Okay. They use that. You know, they use that in candy. Yeah. Chocolate. Uh huh. That gives a very special smell. Uh huh. Very delicate. Can you hold here, please? I'm going to light it for you to see yeah, how the it works. See, it's, it's a nice smell. Mm -hmm. You can use as a torch also at mm -hmm. night on the rainforest. Okay, so they take a piece of wood and wrap it with that? Yeah. Or you can take that pod from so the from the from the, the tree, nut. can it come out? No, it has no. to be the beetle. Yes, or you drill, you okay. make a, a okay. cut, but then you have to wait for several days to the sap come. It doesn't come like the rubber mm -hmm. that runs from the tree. What's the name of the tree again? Breo. 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 So yeah. Breo. 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 Did you have men in the village sharpen your knife yeah, this morning? Yeah, morning? yeah, yeah. Or did you sharpen it yourself? I've tried to sharpen well, but he was better. Mm -hmm. And he did sharp it for me. And I got one of the stone that he sell me. Yeah, his special stone. Very for, special. Yeah, you, just so find, you just find on the small creeks uh, where there is some waterfall. Uh -huh. That's that kind of stone. Yeah. That's the stone that the Indians use to make tools. Yeah. Is that the like piece? X. Pumice like, yeah. Volcano yeah. from uh -huh. volcanic yeah. ash. Yeah. Das ist wie bei uns in Alemannia Harz. Uh -huh. Harz. Das ha ist bei die Kiefern. Äh, Kiefernbäume, die diese langen Nadeln haben. Die haben viel Harz. Ah, okay. Oh, it's too wet, maybe. Uh, not too wet, but the humidity. You can use it in church. <laughs> <laughs> what a brilliant idea. Just what we needed. Yeah. Incense. Wow. <laughs> Mm. See how flammable it is. Beautiful. See on the leaf here, and after that you're gonna see how it is. It's see, it melts. And you can smell the smoke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 yeah. Yeah. it's nice, yeah. Yeah. 
the rainy season everything is wet and so you need something that can be flammable very easy and then you take a bunch of leaves and branch and then you start your fire and you can take your fire from here even if it's raining you protect and you go somewhere else and then you form another camp yeah. So forest fires are not very common here. Not very common, because of humidity on the soil, the moisture. So the canopies block most of the sunlight. And at night the trees, they uh, evaporate transportation, transpiration. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning with the sunrise, they start to fall down again. And then the canopy blocks the sun and then the humidity and the moisture is stay on the ground, on the leaves. So tell us one more time, please, the name of that is... Breo. 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 And now that will burn for how long, roughly? It can burn for about 20 minutes, a piece like that. So if you get a bunch of them and put on this, that Brazil pod, you have it for about three or four hours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See? Here is the leaf that we've got, see there? Mm -hmm. Now you see how it is. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So it comes out black, yeah? Yeah, black. Which is quite interesting. Yeah. So that's how, what the people use to, uh, to uh, seal their canoe here. Mm -hmm. They use the tree fiber put on the gap and mm -hmm. then they they melt these and then they put on the on the gap on top of the fiber and it can last for about three years four years until mm -hmm. they recoke again in Asia the tree See? that makes yeah. lacquer and have you ever okay. heard of lac or lacquer uh-huh just to they can yeah. actually make dishes out of this oh uh, yeah they dry it many, many times, mm -hmm. and it becomes hard, and the dish is black, mm -hmm. like yeah, lac yeah, lacquer yeah. wood. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But the trouble is, if you touch it, you can get like a, a rash, your skin becomes mm -hmm. red. It's not good to use on your skin, it's yeah. sort of very unsafe. Yeah, you see how it is, look. Uh-huh, yeah. okay. That's what we should have used when I was tiling my It's like bed plastic, huh? Mm -hmm. It's like plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Shiny too. Yeah. I can take it home. Rainforests produce everything you need if you know how to harvest, where to harvest and when to harvest. Yeah. That's all these things to do. It's not just you know the plant, but how to collect mm -hmm. and how to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the time you have to collect. There is time for everything. Now, who taught you? Um, I have a chance to be with Mark Plotkin one time, okay. one week here. Mm -hmm. And most of uh, the knowledge is by books. Richards, um, Walter Bates, and uh, mm -hmm. Alexander von Humboldt, books, mm -hmm. reading. And there's some people that live in the forest also talk with you them. I'm going to say Alexander von Humboldt was your teacher. Oh, no, no, no. A <laughs> hundred no. years ago. Oh, no, no. The, the book. <laughs> the, his book was my part of my teaching. No. But Mark Plotkin, he was here, I think, was uh, 1994 uh -huh. or 93. And he's the first time he's here. Uh -huh. And he's now reading a book writing a book on the Rio Negro. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. Now what is he? he, he yeah, he, he studied under one of the fathers of American ethnobotany, as it's called. He's a fellow who's now deceased. He was a young professor at Harvard. Mm -hmm. He spent many, many years down here. He probably collected more plants than any single botanist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he spent a lot of time during World War II mm -hmm. trying to find an alternative source of rubber. Mm -hmm. Was never very successful. Mm -hmm. But he had several students, most of whom I knew. But Mark and Mike Balick, the only two that are alive. From all the others died. And his name is Schultes. 
Richard Evans Schultes. Yeah. Richard no, Evans. The name of the teacher Schultes. was Schultes. 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 And his wife was a very well known opera star. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark has a, a book, The Shaman's Apprentice, which is a very wonderful book. Have you heard about the no. book? No, oh, well, I know about the book, but I've the not shaman's, read it. Shaman's Apprentice. Uh, the apprentice, oh. Shaman's Apprentice. Ah, oh, okay. He's okay. on TV sometimes. Uh-huh, okay. The Shaman's Apprentice. The Shaman's Apprentice, yeah. Huh. It has been with many shamans in, in Venezuela, in Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, uh, Suriname, all this area of he South uses America. All these drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Virola is a famous drug that he's... Virola. Yeah, Virola. Yeah. They push it up the nose. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, it's low in the they nostrils. Snuff it. <laughs> you know, the other thing, you, they tell me this. They said that the, the word in French for rubber is caoutchouc. Uh -huh. And they say in one of the Indian languages it's kahuchu. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I think, think it's kashua. Kashua, something similar like yeah. that, many of these, kauchua, weeping wood, the wood that, that cries. Trips, yeah, mm -hmm. that cries, that's right. So there's a very interesting book that was written by a woman called Weeping Wood. Uh -huh. And it's the story of rubber in South America. It's, it's, a, it's a novel, it's mm -hmm. not all, it's based on true things, uh -huh. but it's not a true story. More fiction and... Yeah, fiction. It's a very nice story. Yeah. Vicky Baum was the author. Her name is Baum. Baum. So if you think of the word tree in German, it's Baum. Baum. Vicky yeah. Baum. Baum. Yeah, Baum. The Weeping Wood. Mm. She wrote it in 1947. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting... Uh, but see, the, the South Americans, they never thought of taking the seed of rubber and planting it. They thought. But the problem here is the leaf blight fungus. Yeah, exactly. Like everything else. That's why the forest is so diverse. It uh, yeah. tells you, yeah. you don't have to plant on one culture, on the, on the place. Yeah, a little monoculture Yeah, yeah there is, you're going to have problems because the insect, when you knock down one hectare of forest, which has more than 250 different species, will flash to the neighbor forest, and when you stuck your single seed there, that's going to be the beginning of the problem. Mm -hmm. When your crops start to sprout, everybody comes, and there is a big party because there is only one species there. So when you have a huge amount of diversity of species, so insect eats here, and look down there and see a different one, goes there, mm -hmm. there, and there, until he come back here, you have new leaves already, right. and that's how the rainforest is. Yeah. Need the balance of nature. Yeah.